All right, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Eric Chu. A um, little bit about myself. I grew up in the Bay Area in Los Altos and went to Monta Vista High School. Um, after that, I went to college in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins studying biomedical engineering. And I wound up into real estate after first working in finance in the medical device industry. Basically, I started part time and I just became so passionate about it. I switched over to full time and it's been that way ever since. It's been now my fourth year now. Um, I'm joined here today by Scott. Um, he can introduce himself. He's the managing, uh, the manager of Los Altos office at Intero. Eric, thank you, and uh, thanks for participating uh, in this uh, in this webinar. Yeah, a little bit about me. Grew up in in Palo Alto. Went to school locally, and uh, live in Los Altos Hills with three kids in college. And uh, been with Intero since uh, November of 2018. Prior to that, I was in mortgage and, and wealth management. And just a little bit about Intero. Intero was founded in 2002 and um, was sold to Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Warren Buffett's company in 2014. Um, and we're part of an organization within uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy called Home Services of America, which is the largest real estate company in the world. And um, Intero enjoys number one market share in Santa Clara County. All right, um, I'll briefly go kind of an update on the real estate market since shelter in place. Um, our Santa Clara County shelter in place order was placed on March 17th of this past year, this year. And the MLS actually suspended days on market starting March 17th. Um, March 31st, um, we were deemed, real estate agents were deemed as essential and we could resume working again. And in May, on May 16th, uh, the MLS reinstated uh, days on market. And so I can show some quick stats here to go over the market. So first here are the median sales prices of condos in Santa Clara County. So since January, that's increased 5.5% 5 .5 from 700, 779 to 821. Next slide I'd like to show is the days on market for condos. So we started at 32 in January. Um, it went down to zero for May. Like I said, the MLS suspended the days on market. Um, and now it's back to 14 days as of last month. Um, single family is a little bit interesting in that we've had a 14.2% increase in the median sales price since the beginning of the year. So 1.2 million in January to 1.37 um, as of last month, July 31st. The, the days on market, um, as you can see, um, went down to zero for May and, and we're now at nine days on market median, which is quite, quite fast. Um, I'd like to go to Scott now. Maybe he can give us um, some info on the, on the mortgage market. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's really interesting. Um, you know, interest rates are uh, at all time lows for, for purchase transactions. Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac actually, uh, which is called a, a, a government entity, they came out today and on refinances, they're applying a 50 basis point uh, hit uh, to the rate, which basically equals about an eighth to a quarter uh, in, in interest rates on all loans under $765,000. Um, and they're doing that um, because of the, the pandemic. However, if you're, if you're uh, buying a home and using financing, so a purchase loan, it doesn't apply to that. But I will say what's, what's incredibly important right now is if you are active in the market, is getting pre-approved. Um, you know, the interesting thing about buying a house is when you buy a house and you use financing, you fixed your biggest cost, which is housing, and you, then you provide a hedge against inflation. And with, with everything that's happening, you know, doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, but um, with, with the printing of money that's happening, at some moment we, we will see in inflationary pressures. And if you're 
fortunate enough to buy a home here in the near future using these incredible low rates and fixing it for 30 years, you're gonna be really, really in a strong position moving forward for you and your family. So rates are low, you know, um, they're, they're taking a little bit longer because of the amount of refinancing, but you know, they've never been lower. I don't know where they're gonna go in the future, but um, it's, a great, it's a great time to buy right now. All right, thanks Scott. And so yeah, we'll transition in that into how to buy in this market. So currently um, we have state and county guidelines for, for real estate, for buying and selling. And so that what that has entailed is we've eliminated open houses currently. And so all showings are done by appointment only um, following um, COVID guidelines with sanit sanitization and, and masks. Um, one, one challenging part about the market right now is that it's, it's quite hot at the moment. And so it's kind of difficult for many buyers to get houses and, and something that, you know, Intero and, and what I can provide as well is we have um, off market and coming soon properties that, that we can see um, before they reach the public markets like Redfin and Zillow. Um, I guess the, the next topic I wanna touch upon would, with Scott would be what the difference is between condos and single families that he's seen in our market. Yeah, I'll speak to that, but just to go back to how to buy in this market. Sure. So, so what we're seeing is virtual open houses first. So we're, ha we're having, when homes come on the market, agents are showing them virtually. Um, and then in order to see it virtually, you have to demonstrate that you have the ability to purchase the home. And so that could be either a, a bank statement showing that you could pay cash or a pre-approval letter uh, from, from your lender. Um, and so just know that if you're active in the market, that's probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is to get pre-approved if you're, if you're going to use a loan, because in order to actually even see the properties virtually, they're, they're going to require that. Um, but to speak to, to speak to the market, it, it's, it's incredible what we've seen happen over, well, quite frankly, since the end of Q4 last year. Last year, at the end of last year, the, the condo and townhouse markets were incredibly hot. Yeah. They were moving quickly, they were over asking. And then we have this pandemic hit and we have seen an absolute shift. It, it, it's incredible. We are seeing a migration away from, from cities. Example, you take a look at San Francisco. San Francisco's listings are up 100%. Their days on market are up over 100%. And if you think about it, 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 it kind of makes sense. You, you, you move to a city like San Francisco um, you know, for the lifestyle and for a job, and maybe it's close to where you work out, it's close to the restaurants, um, and all that's kind of changed. And so we're, we're seeing that, you know, not only in San Francisco, but we're seeing it in parts of, you know, downtown San Jose. And so there's a few ways to look at this. People are looking for housing that can have an office, that can have a yard, that is kind of a lifestyle. And so it presents opportunities. If, if, you're, if you've been thinking about you want a condo or a townhouse, it's probably one of the best times to go out and, and look at those, at those homes because days on market are increasing, there's more inventory, and so there's gonna be more opportunity. I think the other thing to touch on is with some of these tech companies coming out and, and call it declarations or saying that, you know, people don't need to come back, uh, you know, to the office. I think Twitter came out and said, you don't ever have to come back. You've got Google that's come out and Apple have come out that said, you know, you will make a decision in June of 2021. We're seeing people make lifestyle moves, which is really interesting, Me meaning that they're deciding that we're going to go live in Bend, Oregon, or we're going to go live in Santa Cruz or Capitola or Carmel. So it's just a really interesting market with what's happening. Uh, and, and I think we're going to continue to see you know, this, this shift, um, you know, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So to parlay that to the, the, the next and last topic on how to sell, 
um, in this market. So Scott briefly mentioned it. So we do have um, virtual tours. We have um, 3D guided tours with different pl pl platforms like Matterport. Um, and I think one of the key differentiations at this point on, on selling your house is getting the maximum possible exposure. And so something that we do at Intera and that I also do personally is uh, market online. So on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, and, and other social networks as well, because it's just so important to get the most possible people to see your property and then eventually go into your property and then write an offer on your house. Eric, that's so, that's so important. And I don't think a lot of people r really realize the importance of, of the social media platforms for maximum exposure, because to your point, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they don't want to go out and necessarily see a property unless it kind of have, has all the right touch points. And so um, how do you get it out there besides, you know, MLS? Well, you've got to take it to social media and um, you've done a great job on hitting those different platforms. It's really, really important. And I think that's, that's here to stay. That's not going away. Exactly. And then one, one final topic is the, the um, network we have of top producing agents. And so I was, I was asking them to run the stats and they were saying that 40% of all these things that come on MLS come on to private networks beforehand. And, and that helps you have on the seller side to get some exposure before occurring days on market. And on the buy side, that allows you to see some properties again before they hit the market and before it reaches the, the mass public. Um, yeah, go ahead. One, one, one other thing to add there, Eric, is, is just the importance of, if possible, having the property be vacant. Because yeah. today, you know, we, we don't have your open house, open to the public, we, we set uh, time windows where it's by appointment only, there are 20 to 30 minute increments, and only you know two people per family with an agent can come into the property, then things need to be wiped down. And you know if, if you've got someone that's living in the property, it, it just makes it less convenient to be able to show so we're really stressing and trying to get people to you know, live with a family member or move into an Airbnb or some sort of temporary housing to maximize the ability for Eric to show the property. Um, it's really, really important. And we're seeing you know, a lot of people move homes quickly that are, are providing you know, uh, vacated properties, really important. Yeah, so I guess we're, we're pretty much wrapped up. And if we have any questions, um, you can go into the Q&A or the chat. and You can add those. Um, and we'll stick around for a few minutes here to answer any questions. I'm going I'm to launch a poll also just to kind of see uh, how, what people's thoughts on the market are. Got three votes so far, four votes, 75% saying so. The, the, the consensus on, on this webinar is, is bullish for the Silicon Valley real estate prices. And I would, I would have to agree with that. I think um, we've, I think Scott can agree to can comment on this as well, is we've heard um, so much about like the, the flight from Silicon Valley and people leaving Silicon Valley. And I think that's true. We've had many, many people leave Silicon Valley, but I think on the flip side, we have many, many people move to Silicon Valley. And I think even with the pandemic, it shows the value of Silicon Valley. If you just look at our, how our market has, has performed during the worst or craziest possible time that we've seen in our lifetime. And, and we can see the results. So. You're, you're right. I mean, it's, uh, we live in an amazing, amazing place. It's an international marketplace. You've got some of the biggest tech companies in the world um, that are highly successful. You know, I think Apple may have hit an all time high. It's almost a $2 trillion company. And so people want to be around that, 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 you know, there's, there's attraction to that. And, you know, the weather, you can't beat the weather. And so schools are excellent. So I, I, don't, I don't see 
I don't see it, it shifting away um, unless something unforeseen happens, but I don't see that on the horizon. Um, we had one question here. Why do you need a pre-approval to see virtual tour? And, and uh, you do not. And so um, kind of what, what I think we were trying to say is that um, you can look online and at all the virtual tours and, and, uh, and virtual open houses. Um, the, the, I think Scott, I think was mentioning was that to schedule one-on-one um, -on -one appointments to see the properties we where um, sellers are, are asking for pre-approvals of the potential buyers to minimize um, potential risk to, to the sellers for people entering their houses. So that's kind of, um, Uh, the next question, in terms of condos and townhomes, do you see a price decrease aside from the financial opportunity we are right now? Um, I, I think that there, there is an opportunity, like Scott was mentioning, um, in terms of the overall Silicon Valley economy, I think we, we briefly touched on that as well, that it's, I believe that it's still quite strong. And so because of that, it, it drives our, our housing prices because the majority, not the majority, a good number of, of the real estate purchasing is coming from um, tech employees with the stock. And as the stock market has continued to perform extremely strongly, the, the housing market has followed. Do you have anything to add on that, Scott? Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to depend. I, you know, I, I think it's why is someone selling? Um, you know, are they looking to purchase something else here? Or are they are they moving up? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I, I think what, what's causing it is that people have been working from home um, and, you know, if they've got uh, a small family, there's really no place beyond the kitchen table or in the, in the, in the dining room um, to, to be able to do, to do the work. And I think that um, a lot of people that are living in those townhouses have made a decision that they want, they want more space. And so, uh, it, you know, I can't predict the future, but that's certainly what we're seeing at the moment. But I do think that if someone's patient um, and works with Eric, they uh, they can go out and get a you know get a phenomenal deal uh, on uh, on a townhouse or a condo. Okay, one, we'll do one last question. It's saying, should I buy or rent? Um, I, I think that's that's a question that you'd have to answer for yourself. Um, there's pros and cons with both. I'll, I'll be the contrarian first and say um, the buy to rent calculation in Silicon Valley um, shows that renting is e extremely more affordable than, uh, than purchasing. Um, however, with, with, with buying, you, you are locking in your, your, your housing cost and you're potentially gaining quite a bit of equity. Um, I have yet to meet a single person from Silicon Valley that has not regret it selling a house. Um, everyone that I've spoken with that's ever sold a house in Silicon Valley, when they look back in time, wishes they'd kept the house because our housing prices have, have climbed quite dramatically. But um, I'll let Scott also comment well, on that. So, so one of the things that, that we're doing at Intero is, and this is part of my background, is we partnered with a wealth management company that helps people understand the long-term benefits of, of home ownership. And, um, you know, the, the, the bank is going to qualify you on a debt ratio. What shows up on a credit report? Um, what's not on there are things like you're sending your kids to private school or you're, you belong to a country club or you send money to your parents or your siblings. Those things don't show up. Um, but, but they do impact overall affordability. What's incredible about housing is that you can buy it on leverage. So today, you know, we can buy a million five house with 10% down. Um, and you probably could buy some, you know, condos, uh, townhouses with 10% down. Um, but you get the benefit of the overall appreciation. And then there's tax benefits to it as well. Um, that you don't get from renting. And so, you know, reach out to Eric if, if you want to have a further discussion around, you know, getting some help around the long-term planning. But I don't think there's, again, I mean, I, I don't want to sound, I'm bullish on, on, on the housing market right now. And with rates being where they're at, 
it's a great time to lock in a 30 year fixed. All right, well, sorry, one last question. Um, what are the chance of property tax increases due to Proposition 13? Um, the latest news we have on property taxes is Proposition 15, which splits the property tax role on the commercial and the residential side. Um, as of right now, there's no talk about um, property tax changes for residential. Um, they're currently debating that for the commercial. I actually heard Larry Stone this morning, um, the Santa Clara County Assessor, give a talk about this. And that's something that's being considered to, to reassess commercial property. Um, that's still in the discussion phases. Um, but in terms of for residential, there's, it's not on the table at the moment, not to say that it won't be in the future, but at the moment it's not on the table. Yeah, the challenge about, the challenge about the, the commercial reassessment is that that's not gonna hit the landlord Anyone that's got triple net leases, that's going to be passed through to, to yeah. who's ever leasing the building, yeah. which in turn could mean higher prices to you know us consumers, or you know higher carrying costs for, uh, you know for our tenants. And so, yeah. I uh, I hope that doesn't go through. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you Scott for participating as well. Um, we really yeah. appreciate it everybody's time. Um, reach out to me if you have any other questions. Thank you.